Hi, this is Mary Kirby, also known as Runway Girl. You can find me at flightglobal.com slash runwaygirl. That's not too hard. Let's get right to the news. This week has been really, really interesting. Ever since my first video class last week, there has been, well, tons of stuff still going on in the in-flight entertainment and connectivity world. And let's start off with U.S. Airways. Now, last week, I... Told, told you guys that U.S. Airways had decided to do a one-month trial of Lumexis's fiber-to-the-screen in-flight entertainment system. Guess what? U.S. Airways has made the very informed decision of extending that trial. They're going to do it. They're going to do the trial for at least two months, but they might even go for three, and that makes a whole lot of sense. But. Even more importantly, U.S. Airways has disclosed to me that they are really interested in bringing connectivity on board their aircraft. Uh, this is quite significant. Like I mentioned last week, U.S. Airways has been a little bit behind its competitors on this front. So it's going to be very interesting to see just how quickly U.S. Airways decides to adopt in-flight connectivity. Uh, who they're going to use as their provider, um, that has not been disclosed yet. However, I think it would make a lot of sense if U.S. Airways did adopt the uh, AirCell uh, air-to-ground connectivity solution. AirCell has said that they're in advanced talks with a sixth customer, and um, so who knows, maybe it's U.S. Airways. Just we're going to have to wait and find out. Next up, uh, Alaska Airlines and Southwest Airlines this week have gone on record with uh, their plans for trialing Row 44's KU Band satellite-based connectivity solution. Southwest Airlines says that it is going to begin commercial trials of Row 44 system in the middle of February. Alaska Airlines says it's going to begin um, non-revenue trials of the system also in February and then afterwards roll it out uh, in commercial service. So exciting stuff happening on that end. Row 44 still faces quite a number of uh, apparent obstacles uh, at the FCC uh, with its, some of its competitors and rivals uh, giving it some trouble there, but who knows? Southwest and Alaska says they're moving forward, and so let's just see if that happens. Um, uh, next up, uh, the Federal Communications Commission. I mean, they have not moved at all on the uh, ban, on their ban of in flight cellular phone use here in the United States even though you have major carriers all over the world bringing this service to passengers. Carriers in Europe, the Middle East, Asia, they're all on board with this. You have a number of trials going on right now and a number of carriers that are rolling it out um, fleet-wide. So why doesn't the United States uh, uh, finally uh, loosen their restrictions on this? Well, the fact of the matter is that passengers uh, here in the United States insist that they don't want the system. They say they want uh, text messaging, they say that they want to be able to access their email, but they do not want uh, people chatting in flight. I think that it's uh, going to be a foregone conclusion that we're eventually going to have um, mobile phone connectivity in flight. I think that um, it's going to happen eventually, but it's not going to happen any day soon. A source tells me that the FCC is, has no intention of moving on this subject. One of the big reasons why is because Congress is uh, passing, uh, well, they're moving legislation uh, through Congress that is um, going to essentially uh, solidify the current FCC and F FAA bans on this um, mobile phone connectivity. So, but I think it'll happen eventually. So, that's it. Hawaiian Airlines announced this week that they are bringing iPod connectivity uh, on board their aircraft, on board their Airbus A330s. Um, essentially, it's going to be in first class. The, the connectivity is through Panasonic Avionics in-flight entertainment systems, and first class passengers are going to be able to use it. Now, Hawaiian Airlines obviously is not the first carrier to introduce this. Singapore Airlines became the first carrier last year when it introduced iPod connectivity via Panasonic in-flight entertainment systems last year. But so far, there are a number of carriers adopting this system. Publicly announced uh, deals include, obviously, Singapore Airlines, Hawaiian Airlines, Avianca, um, also United Airlines, and Air New Zealand. That's the folks that we know offering, uh, offering this service to passengers or planning to. Panasonic has uh, revealed to me that they um, have also signed deals with uh, another six carriers um, that have not been disclosed at this time. So essentially Panasonic has raked up deals uh, with nearly a dozen carriers for iPod connectivity. It's very, very exciting. And these carriers have uh, adopted what Panasonic is calling um, iPod Connect. Now, this is what is already flying, and this simply allows you to plug your iPod in uh, to the to the seatback uh, IFE system and view the content of your I, uh, iPod, um, the content that is on your iPod via the seatback screen. It also charges your iPod while you're at it, so that's great. 
The second step that is coming on board here mid-2009 late uh, or later uh, late 2009 is called iPod Merge and this is very very cool. It lets you plug your iPod in and it essentially becomes a very seamless passenger experience. You can forget about your iPod. You can uh, pretend it's not even there because what you're going to be doing is looking at all the content via your seatback screen but it's in an integrated fashion. So essentially you're going to have a sort of combined library which is awesome as you know I mean I mean it's just such an incredibly cool um, offering so uh, expect that to come on board and expect uh, a customer to roll that out in the not too distant future Panasonic did reveal to me that they have secured a customer for iPod merge and um, and so it's getting very very exciting out there now the one thing you have to remember and why this is so so interesting right now is that not so long ago it seemed like in-flight entertainment manufacturers were going to become nearly obsolete because passengers are bringing their own uh, personal, personal electronic devices on board all the time and so a lot of passengers a long time ago said forget about what this IFE has, I've got a better system here sitting in my lap. So IFE players had to make a decision and they had to make it fast. How do we stay viable? How do we keep um, stay in business? And this is how they're doing it. They are now equipping passengers to be able to use their systems through the IFE system. And Panasonic is not the only one doing it. It's rival, Talus, also plans on bringing iPod connectivity on board and this is a big focus for them in 2009. I plan on talking to them about it later today and um, so we'll definitely bring you more on that later. So that's Runway Girl for this week. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking us out. We're going to see you next week. I'm about to interview an American Airlines pilot. There's a lot of weather products available over the internet. I think connectivity is long overdue and it's about time that we're really jumping on board with this.